Good morning and happy new month. It is October 1st. Can it you believe it? Yes, that? happy October. The beginning of a brand new quarter. And here we are at 2013, the last quarter of the year. Down to my last quarter as well. So there you go. <laughs> All right. Hello. Good morning. My name is Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best. Good October 1st. I'll tell you what, uh, the year is moving along rather quickly. And of oh course, my goodness. the fair is in town and it's going all this week. Today that's is right. uh, Today is Tuesday, so it'll be here the, this week and then that's it. It won't be back for another year. And of course, after it leaves, then Eddie Pitts and all the fine staff out at the Wayne Regional Agricultural Fairgrounds start on next year's fair. Isn't that crazy? It's a big event. They you have know, to start planning all for the next year. That fair is owned, by the way, by the Wayne County Livestock Development Association. What a wonderful organization that is. They, yeah, and, but they do a fantastic job, so yeah. make sure to plan sometime during this week to take your family out to the Wayne Regional Agricultural Fair and experience what we have to offer here in our community. Lots of stuff going on. I'll try to yes. look over our list and see That's what's on right. tonight. I know the spelling contest is tonight. That's right. That's, That's right. Wayne's favorite part. That's one, one of them. one of them anyway. Yeah, Julie Andrews is having a birthday today. Well, happy yeah. birthday, Julie Andrews. Yeah. You know, she's one of my favorites. Is she? Always well, has been. All right. Well, the hills are alive. Yes, they are. I understand. Anyway, she's 77 <laughs> years today. Zach Galifianakis, an actor. His uncle was Say Nick. that last name again. Galifianakis. Galifianakis. Yeah, his uncle That's a funny Nick word. was a politician here in North Carolina for many How years. How about that? Anyway, Zach is 43 today. Stella Stevens. Va Voom. She is 76 <laughs> years today. She One of the many movies she starred in was a movie... Uh, with Elvis back in 1962. Anyway, she's a very lovely lady at 76 years today. Stephen Collins is 65 years today. And he played Dr. Dayton King on in the hit TV series, No Ordinary Family. And he's done a lot of other things as well. But Eastside Morales also having a birthday. He's another one of my favorite actors you don't hear much about, but he's 50 today. In the movie about, um, in the Buddy, not Buddy Holly, but the Richie, Richie Haven, Richie, uh, Richie Valens. <laughs> Was it Richie Valens? Yeah, um, La Bamba movie. He played yep. Richie Valens' brother in the movie. He's 50 today, Esai Morales is. Anyway, well, that's happy birthdays birthday for today. Happy birthday to all go. of you. Now, who's on today's program? On today's program, let's see, we have a story from the library. Oh boy. And then I believe you talked with Dr. Tracy Ivey about the Constitution. Let me tell you something. This lady is so knowledgeable. She's very smart. She's uh, one of our instructors. She's a doctor of, mm -hmm. uh, out at uh, Wayne Community College. And uh, I love talking to her about the Constitution. Well, you hear about uh, some things, some of her ideas That's about That's right, because recently it was Constitution Week. Indeed, it was a couple of weeks ago. That's Constitution right. Week, the 17th of September through, I believe, the 23rd or so. Anyway, that, uh, what do you know about the Constitution? Hmm. If you don't know anything about the Constitution, then you are, that's sad because everybody should know about the Constitution. And, and Dr. Ivey points out that people, the first, one of the biggest misconceptions about the Constitution is that it's pages and pages and thick document and book, you know, it's not. It's a very short document. Yep. Very short, and you should read it if you don't do anything else. Read the Constitution. It doesn't Wayne take long keeps to one do with him at all times. Got it right there. Yes, Got he it does. right over there. Sure do. He's very serious about it. I'm very serious about the Constitution. That's right, and keep this in mind, as will be brought up in the course of the program, the Constitution does not give you any rights at all. Now, the Bill of Rights, later on, the latter half of the Bill of Rights do. The Constitution protects the rights you have naturally, that you're naturally born with here in, here in America. Keep that in mind and think like that. The Constitution protects those rights. Wonderful. There you go. Now I'm going to get off my soapbox. That's your, your Constitution turn. lesson for today. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. All right. Let's see. October the 10th, 1010. 1010. Yes. The, it's the second annual Goldsboro Rotary Open Fundraiser. It is. Yes. Really? Yes. Really? It certainly is. Oh, it's boy. a fundraiser. They're having a, we're having a golf tournament. Let's see. It's going to be out at Walnut Creek. We'd love to have you come and join one of the teams. That is 1010, October the 10th, second annual golf tournament, and it'll be uh, for the Goldsboro Rotary. And of course, Goldsboro Rotary, as all rotaries, are all about fighting the disease of polio mm -hmm. and doing many other fine things here in our community. I believe you're with the Rotary. Aren't I you? believe I am. I believe she is. <laughs> so is Dr. Ivy. Yes, absolutely. There you go. Absolutely. I got it now. So yeah. that's all, all happening soon. And of course, two days after that, Taste of Wayne. Oh boy. Taste of Wayne, October oh the 12th. Get your ticket from 11 to 1.30. Things will be happening right here downtown Goldsboro at Cornerstone Commons. Your tickets are $15. You can get them on their website or stop by their, their offices. They'd love to sell them to you. Taste, little taste of all different restaurants. Mm. 
and uh, vendors throughout Wayne County. And I mean, last year we did have some fabulous things. Oh yeah. Ooh, we tasted some good lasagnas yeah. and oh. pizzas and cupcakes. And oh my goodness, the list goes on and on. Steak, mm -mm, making me hungry. And and you get to sample all Every of these restaurants of for how much? Fifteen bucks. Fifteen bucks. So if you've ever wondered about, you know, I'd like to go to that whatever restaurant it is over there. I'd like to go to that restaurant over there and just try them out. But you know, I don't want to go unless I know what it's going to be like. And well, I mean, these are fantastic go. restaurants. Yeah. Some of the best in our community. Yeah, Almost exactly all right. of them are going to be at this Taste of Wayne. Mm -hmm. And this year they'll have music playing as they did last year. Right there on, in Cornerstone Commons, they'll have a band, and then when the band goes and takes a break, we'll have Tommy King and a few DJs playing some music to keep it going, keep it lively out there. And they'll also have local artists that'll be showing their artwork, and that you can purchase it, or you can just w walk by and look at it and enjoy what local artists can and have done. There you go. Okay. Also keep in mind that this Friday, October 4th, uh, the uh, a fall of jazz gumbo continues at That's Wayne right. Community College. All the, all these events are free. All of these fr events and these uh, jazz series are free. They are all free. Uh, and this Friday, mas uh, mystery masterpieces. Yeah, that's really neat at the Arts Council. Mystery masterpieces, with performance by saxophonist Willie Dupree. He will be performing at the Arts Council of Wayne County from five until eight p.m. I said. Yeah, but anyway, it's going to be the Arts Council. <laughs> it is, and it's yeah, fun. It's corner of John and Walnut Street. That's right. All right. Uh, Community Action Day is coming up October the 5th from 10 to noon. A Community Action Day is, is run by the DGDC, or Downtown Goldsboro Development Corporation. And it's all about beautifying downtown. Yeah. They ask for volunteers to come and be a part. If you want to be a part, you can give them a call or visit their website. They'll be planting fall flowers, picking up trash downtown, really just trying to make it continue to be as vibrant and as beautiful as, we're, as it is now and as we're moving forward. Lots of changes are gonna be taking place in the next couple of years in our downtown. We're very proud of that, as are our merchants, and we're excited about what's happening. And if you wanna participate, October the 5th, from 10 till noon in Community Action Day, give them a call at DGDC. Oh boy. Well, did you know Lettuce is a member of the sunflower family. I can't say that I was aware of that, Wayne Alley. I didn't know that either, but it is. And that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying He's anymore. He's going to leave it at that. I'm going to leave it at that. Well, let's head on to our interviews, and we'll see you back in just a few minutes. Five, four, three, two, one. Today we're talking with Dr. Tracy Ivey of Wayne Community College. Now, you are you're a department chair, a division chair. A division at the, chair. At the, uh, at the college. I and am. Uh, first of all, thank you and for being here and welcome to the studio. Thank you uh, for having me. All right, tell me about uh, your division there at the college. Well, basically it's arts and sciences, which is college transfer. Mm -hmm. So students come to us and then when they achieve their degree or a certain number of hours, they transfer to a four-year institution. Oh, okay. Wow, a lot of happy people in Lots your Lots of happy people. Yeah. <laughs> Because they move on to, exactly. to the four-year college. Exactly. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm. uh, last week, uh, Dr. Ivey, the, uh, uh, we observed and celebrated Constitution Week, mm -hmm. something that uh, each and every single American should know about and observe and, uh, and uh, thank the good Lord mm -hmm. for our Constitution. Right. Now, uh, I think, you know, it's been a couple of hundred years, a little over 230-some mm -hmm. years since mm -hmm. uh, it was written and ratified. Uh, do people, in your opinion, do people understand the Constitution now that we're kind of removed from that time period? I would say a lot do not, and I think that is one reason why the David Williams chapter of the Daughters of the American Revolution, which I'm a member of, mm -hmm. has really pushed to have that at the forefront um, in the public when it comes to Constitution Week and Constitution Day, which was September 17th, and then of course the college. Um, also participates in all of that. Right. So lots of good things going on. Um, I think we were very successful last week, but yes, I agree. I think it takes a lot to keep people educated about the Constitution because there are some misconceptions. Yeah, do you want to share with us what you feel may be a misconception about the Constitution? The length of the Constitution. Oh, they think it's pages and Massive. pages and pages. Of, oh, and I yes. think it's because we see governmental documents today that yes. are extremely large, yeah. wordy, and um, they didn't, it was very short, sweet, and to the point. It was. That, do you feel the framers had that in mind to keep it as brief as possible and perhaps as, uh, as uh, open as possible rather than being specific in some areas? 
I would say that at that time when you have to copy documents, mm -hmm. um, make changes to documents, it's easy now with word processing, but then when you wrote it, you didn't want to write a thousand page yeah. document. You, you couldn't go to your desktop and, no, and just knock it no. out. And they did this in about three months, so yeah. they didn't have a tremendous amount of time either. Yeah. Uh, they wanted to get it done and, and then move on. And the, the, the vagueness of some of it, uh, some people refer to it as being vague, but that was done purposely. It was, it was. Um, and remember, the Constitution is our second government, not our first. We were under the Articles of Confederation right. first. Yeah. But yes, they wanted to leave it somewhat open. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the big debates was the Bill of Rights, right. whether they were going to ha have any Bill of Rights in the Constitution. Uh, they negotiated that and started with a little over 200, got it down to our 10 first. Right. Ten Amendments or the Bill of Rights. Um, Federalist Papers mm -hmm. were designed to explain the Constitution to a public that was concerned about what is this new government going to be. We've just kind of left, right. you know, Great Britain and then we've got this Articles of Confederation that wasn't working. So there was some skepticism. So Federalist Papers explains it and a lot of times people will go back to the Federalist Papers yeah. to understand what the framers of the Constitution really meant with the different points they have in there. Now, speaking of wordy mm -hmm. and lengthy, I find the Federalist Papers to be that. Yeah, it's fact, a book. It's, and it, it is a book. It's a book, but it's a compilation of essays. Yeah. Um, they broke apart different pieces of the Constitution to explain it in more detail. Yes. So yes, yes, when you look at the Federalist Papers, it is a book. Yeah, you're getting into a lot of yes. detail there. Right. Very detailed mm -hmm. mind. But, what was but, their mindset? Exactly, and mm -hmm. as you say, that explains each article right and the bill, of right. course, Bill Wright. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's, uh, it's, uh, that is a common misconception, is right. that the Constitution is so long, but it's not that long, it's and it's an short. easy read, frankly. It is. I have my students, when I teach American History One, they read it in class. Yeah. Um, do you feel that there is, uh, would ever be, uh, and I know with amendments, there's 27 amendments uh, that we're constantly adding to, well, I say constantly, it's out of the last 230 years, there's only been 27 changes right. or additions. Uh, do you feel this, uh, that we may uh, uh, be getting to the point that people take it so lightly that uh, they want to, the, to change the Constitution just at, on a, at the drop of a hat so quickly without actually getting into it deeply enough to consider the ramifications of what they're uh, doing? Yeah, I, I think that's true. I think that having that openness mm -hmm with the wording um, gives us a lot more flexibility, mm -hmm. which is what we need. Yeah. It is the world's long, um, longest lived constitution right. and it's the model for a lot of other countries' constitutions. Mm -hmm. So we, we need it to be a little open. We need to not have everything so nailed down, mm -hmm. I guess. At mm -hmm. the same time, there's some people who feel that it is a, uh, it is a living document that, mm -hmm. that we can change it at at, mm -hmm. uh, just at when, on a whim when we feel like it. We can't right. really do we can't that. We can't do that. It's a long process to add an amendment. Yeah. Long process. Yeah. So, uh, so by the time somebody's argument is found to be either true or not true, uh, it may be decades down the road. Exactly. And would have no meaning at all. Exactly. So think about that. Mm -hmm. In fact, think about the Constitution. Unintended consequences. Unintended con And you know, there are several places, in fact, that you mm -hmm. could pick up a copy of the Constitution. Oh, certainly. Evenly. In fact, one of the things that um, the DAR has talked about is actually perhaps getting copies to be able to pass out. Oh, um, we did do packets for the schools mm -hmm. so they would have some resource material, but it really is um, easy to purchase and distribute copies of the Constitution, yes. so that has been something we've yes. discussed. In fact, I have one here in the studio. Mm -hmm. So uh, I strongly recommend that you read our Constitution. And a lot of people, I find uh, another misconception. Uh, people will tell me, well, I have a right. The Constitution gives me the right. But that's not really true either, is no. it? The Constitution protects their rights. Exactly. They have a right anyway. Right. They're born with a right. Right, right. It's the first government that you really see in the world that, you know, we the people. Yes. The government's power comes from the consent of the governed. And that was a brand new concept. Um, the philosophers in France, which are actually referred to as philosophs, had discussed this type of government, Montesquieu being the most famous with right. his separation of powers and checks and balances that we just assume everyone would know about. They took that, our framers took it, and made it happen. Mm -hmm. So we are really the great experiment that worked. Yeah, the uh, parts of the Constitution uh, based on Magna Carta? 
Some, yes. Some of it. Mm -hmm. English mm -hmm. common law yeah. in general. Mm -hmm. So it goes way back it to does. the 1200s, 13th century mm -hmm. that, uh, that uh, you can look back and mm -hmm. actually see how it's progressed, how right. we progressed, and how right. and the mindset of the framers mm -hmm. were they were they were brilliant. They were they took someone's Absolute ideas terms. and said, I think we can tweak it. Yeah. I think this will work. And of course, there was some controversy between the small states and the large states yeah. and balance of power. But yes, I think that they did a outstanding job creating such a living document. Yeah. When you stop and think. Well, we're going to build a country here. Where do mm -hmm. you start? Right. What do you write first? Right. And fortunately, uh, we, the people, mm -hmm. became the first words. Exactly. And uh, and uh, how would how would someone find out more about the Constitution, perhaps the history, besides going to the internet or uh, right. that would be the first place you know, to start? I guess. I I would suggest taking an actual history class. No, that's a good idea. You know, I think that we forget that we do have you know, community college in our area that you can sign up and take classes. You don't necessarily have to be the student who says, I'm going to take some courses and transfer. You can be a retired individual who oh, yeah. says, you know what, I think I want to go take a class. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's a great idea. Take a class. And, sure. And history, uh, especially yes. in history. And exactly. And then that way you can discuss in class. Exactly. And mm -hmm. get other people's uh, mm -hmm. perspectives and ideas mm -hmm. on it. Exactly. Well, it's great having you with us. It's been Thank a pleasure. Thank you so much, Dr. Tracy Edmondson Ivy of Wayne Community College, Division Chair. Thank you so much for Thank being you. with us. In the studio with us today, a couple of new folks here in the uh, Wayne County area uh, with the Wayne County Public Library. Hi. Hi. We want to welcome Evan Small, nice Schmall, yes. and uh, and Marty. Cheddar. Yes, sir. Right. Very good. Thanks, folks, and I appreciate you coming in and talking with us today. You're brand new with the Wayne County Public Library. Let's start with ladies first. Evan, give us a little background. Well, I was raised in Newburgh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Went to ECU, so mm -hmm. I'm a local girl, right. and I have always wanted to work in children's library. Right. And I worked as a school librarian before, so that helped me out with the children, but I'm really happy to be back in a public library because mm -hmm. we have a lot more fun there. Uh -huh. so. Okay. Good. And Marty? Uh, let's, well, I grew up in Greenville, uh, went to East Carolina uh, uh, years ago. Right. And, uh, <laughs> we're, we're not counting years <laughs> here. <laughs> and uh, and I, I worked, I did a bunch of other things. I lived out west for a number of years kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, but then I got back into, uh, I've always loved archives and, um, and I love old stuff. I love interviewing people, I love stories. Everyone has a, a story and experience. I think yeah. that's real important. And uh, I've always gravitated to that. So I went back to the library school. Um, I got a degree, and then uh, from North Carolina Central, and then most recently I moved here from actually from uh, Appalachian State Boone. Oh, okay. Um, Very good. I just finished no another degree there. Great. All right. Well, Evan, you're the head of the children's department. Yes. Is that right? That is right. All right. What are, what challenges faces the head of a children's department besides finding children? Yeah, finding children and finding programs that children want to attend. Uh -huh. We want them to come to the library. We want them to have fun and learn things. So developing the right kind of programming has definitely been um, something that we have to come up with. When children think of the library, they often are thinking, well, that's too boring. I don't want to go there. There's nothing to do right. except look at a book. Right, exactly. All right, so how do you, how do you fight that? Well, that's why we want to bring in things that are fun like gaming, mm -hmm. um, whether it's video games or board games or <laughs> Um, we're trying to do a tween program mm -hmm. yeah. that will aim at 9 to 12 year olds so that they'll have a chance to come in and play things like the minute to win it game show for example we want to do something like that for them because once you start doing that they loosen up they have a lot of fun and then sometimes you can sneak a book in there too. Oh, so well that's it's a little tricky just, there. But. Just say here, uh, here just look at this for a second. Right, right? exactly. Yeah. Doesn't really mean anything. <laughs> yeah. But that works and then um, we also like to do crafts mm -hmm. because lots of kids like to do crafts so yeah. we try and come up with fun new things. Um, one thing we want to do we're thinking next year because we kind of missed the boat this year but a back to school boot camp mm -hmm. where we can do lots of fun things with duct tape. You can make all kinds of things, and they make <laughs> yeah. so much pretty duct tapes now. Yeah. So yes, they do. Um, yeah. So we thought that might be a lot of fun. Do pencil cases and cell phone holders and things like that. Oh, yeah. So that'd be something else to bring them in. Okay. Um, and what else are we doing? Well, we always have our story times. So that's for the younger kids. So moms, grandmas, caretakers, bring your kids in on Tuesday, Wednesdays and Thursdays. We have at 9:30 on Wednesdays toddlers. 
So right. you're 18 months to three years old, mm -hmm. bring them in, we do a couple stories, we might sing some songs, do a craft, you know, it's just fun, interactive. You get to meet other moms and caretakers, the kids make friends. It's a good way, um, get them out of the house for a little while. Yeah, get them out of the and house. And then on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 1030, we have our pre-K club. So that's about three years to five years. And we do the same thing, couple stories, songs, games, do a craft. Okay. And then we do have a baby and me story time. And that's really great for new moms especially. Mm -hmm. But anyone who has a baby, zero to eight months old, 18 months old, we have, it's kind of a lapsit program. It's only about 15 minutes, but you work on their motor skills. They learn, you know, to rhythm and listening. And then it's a great way for moms to network. Okay. And especially for the moms that are just stationed here and are new, don't know a lot. They can talk to the other moms, learn about pediatricians, daycares, schools, things like that. So. Okay. So this is all online at the uh, yes, Wayne County Public Library website. website. <laughs> That's at wcpl.org, mm -hmm. right? Correct. Okay, wcpl.org. <laughs> You go on there and you can find a schedule of everything. Yes, we have a calendar and you can mm -hmm. click on the calendar. It'll tell you what times, where we meet, and um, you can always call us also at the library and we'll be happy to let you know what's okay. coming up. Wow, all right, that's great. Well, <laughs> welcome to Wayne County. Well, thank you very much. And you're from where originally? Well, I say New Bern originally, New Bern, but yeah. um, I have moved around a lot. My dad was in the Navy, so, ah, okay. so but right. really the last 20 years have been New Bern, so I consider myself a Carolina girl. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> New Bern's good, but uh, thank you yeah, and your very... family for your, your father's oh, service well, to you. our country. Thank we, you. we do appreciate that. Thank you. So, Marty Cheddar. Marty, you're a lo you, you cover local history. Yes, sir. Now, that is a fascinating topic as well. Yeah, yeah, it's uh, good. But you're not just a historian. You want to get into the local stuff. Yeah. You mentioned that everyone has a story. Yes, sir. The, okay, the, in the, the local history room, uh, we have already a lot of local family uh, history, stuff like that. There are um, a, a lot of books. Um, we can access Ancest through the library. Mm -hmm. If you have a library card, you can access Ancestry.com for free. You can access it from home. Oh, great. Uh, which a lot of people don't realize. It's a really, really powerful program. Mm -hmm. And it's a great place to start. Um, and when people come in, I'm, I'm always willing to help people get started to help troubleshoot maybe places to research. Uh, also, we have a lot of more resources than um, that people uh, don't know. That ho ho we and we want to promote more accessibility. For example, um, how researching African American family uh, mm -hmm. genealogy. Uh, we have a lot of resources for that. Native American genealogy, um, and I help people. It's important to me to develop a report to to um, help people get started. But it's I'm not going to be. It's difficult for me to to do. I'm not going to do the research for them. Right. I'll help people get started. So you point them in the right direction. Right direction, yeah. Yeah. Well, let me add, you know, years ago I was in the library and I found in the archive area, the history room, uh, books that not only pertain to Wayne County, but other counties in North Carolina as well. And they are so informative. Uh, I mean, Craven County was covered. In mm -hmm. fact, I guess all the counties were covered to some degree. Yes, you're right. There's, we have a section just on Wayne County and then it's and then we have all alphabetical, the, the surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, we actually do have some Wake County, or, or sorry, of course, Wake, but Mecklenburg, um, but it goes in alphabetical order. Yeah. Um, you know, Guilford, Carteret, Craven, right. uh, Washington, the Pitt County, kind of surrounding Green County. Yeah. And then we have some surrounding states, kind of expands out. But there's some really great, there's some old books, some civil, there's actually a, a local Civil War, a history of the North Carolina regiments oh. that was printed in 1901, and it was actually printed here in um, Goldsboro. Really? Yeah, and we have the original. It's on the shelf. I mean, anyone can. You can't check it out, but you can look at it. Well, you know, the mindset of people is so funny. Uh, 1860 to 65, that era uh, seems like it was so long ago. But 1900 is not that long ago <laughs> yeah. to some of us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But when you think about it, that's only what 35 years, uh, 36 years difference. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I often like to equate the, uh, the, the time of the Civil War to the turn of the century to the time of Vietnam to the turn of the century, which yeah. wasn't all that long, and some of us were alive and well back during that time. Yeah. And uh, remember it well, can equate to that. So uh, it wasn't all that long ago, but we have an extensive history department there at the library. Oh, yes, sir, yeah, there, there's a lot of, uh, and, I, and I, I like to engage with people and uh, as I learn the collection, to share other things too. Yeah. You know, we another another kind of new initiative. It's not a new initiative, actually. We it's been started, but what I, um, we have a lot of old high school annuals, and the the University of North Carolina is actually digitizing them for us. Uh, they're they're doing a big initiative through the state, mm -hmm. and I want to take advantage of that. Um, so the ones they have to be at least 50 years old. 
So the ones that are in the possession of the library now have been digitized. Um, but I'm trying to reach out. There's a lot of small county schools. The African American schools aren't done yet. I think mm -hmm. it's important. Um, so I'm, in, I'm actively trying to reach into these groups because they're, they're going to take time to get. Oh, that's great. Um, you know, but like there's Seven Springs High School, Fremont, Nahana, yeah. all these tiny little schools, yeah. Brogdon. Dillard, of course. Yeah, you, Dillard. You have a lot of work ahead of you. <laughs> yeah, but I, I enjoy it because I think that's a, it's an important voice that needs to be. You know, the thing is that it's easy. Uh, you know, it's the, we represent Wayne County, not just Goldsboro. Right. You know, there's, of course, um, I want to do some uh, history initiatives in the other parts of the county, like Fremont, Pikeville. There, there's libraries there, so we can do some of that. Uh, the southern part, mm -hmm. um, Mount Olive, mm -hmm. you know, within the Seven Springs area. Well, unfortunately, we are out of time, but uh, you have a lot of work ahead of you, and uh, I, you, you come in with gusto, Mr. You have, this is Mr. Gusto here. You're going to hit the ground running as you have already done, and I, I appreciate you coming in and talking to us. Okay. Marty thank Cheddar, you. Yes, thank sir. you very much, and Evan Schmall, thank, thank you. you so much, head of the new head of the Children's Department at our Wayne County Public Library on East Ash Street, but you also branch out into the yes. branches as well. Absolutely. Good. All right. Good. Thank you so much. Thank you. WGTV today, Wayne Goldsboro Television. And did you know? Yes. <laughs> that biting a wooden spoon while chopping an onion will stop your eyes from watering. Wow. I didn't know that either. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Where's your wooden spoon, Wayne? Oh, I left, I usually have one with me, but I left my wooden spoon home today. That's a shame. Yeah, it's in the wooden spoon drawer. <laughs> yeah. What's oh, up? Oh, my goodness. This Sunday, October the 6th, once again, is Sunday in the Park. Oh, boy. Sunday in the Park from 2 to 5, and they are so much fun. If you haven't been out there, there's music provided. No, usually mm. it's local musicians mm. in the gazebo in that area. There's all kinds of people from our farmers. From a farmer's market, yeah. and those vendors are out there. Oh, boy. There's activities for young children. There's artwork out there because they partner with the Arts Council of Wayne County. Lots to do. It's all free. There's jewelry. There's baked goods. And the list goes on and on. So if you're in town, stop by Herman Park. Sunday in the park this Sunday, October the 6th from 2 until 5. That does sound like a lot of Love fun. Love to see you there. All free right. of charge. All right. Very good. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, it's uh, October 1st is today, and that means tomorrow is October 2nd. 2nd. Imagine Thank that. you, yes. Mm -hmm. And that means that uh, tomorrow uh, we'll have another program for you right here on WGTV Today. That's Wayne right. Wayne Goldsboro Television. I do hope you join us. We're on every day at 7 a.m. and then again at noon, then again at 5.30, and then again during the evening. You can also find us on YouTube on the city and the county's websites. Click on the YouTube link and you can find all the past recorded days and shows in case there's somebody you missed or something you would like to see. And if you'd like to get word to us about and uh, something going on uh, that you'd like us to announce or something we need to know about, give us two weeks notice if you would please and send it to WGTV at WayneGov.com. WGTV right. at WayneGov.com. So until the next time we meet, I'm Wayne Alley. And I'm Kim Best and this is what's happening in your community.